Hello and uh, welcome to Discover Dorico for May. Um, I understand it's a bank holiday in some parts of Europe, uh, not here in the UK, but in some parts of Europe. So uh, thank you for joining us, or maybe you're watching this later and enjoying the sun, no problem. Um, it's warm here today as well, I'm not going to go on about the weather, but at some point today, probably in about 15 minutes I reckon, there'll be an ice cream van go past. Um, so there'll be a little musical interlude, sorry about that. Um, yeah, my money's on about quarter past, so uh, place your bets now. Um, it was great to meet people recently. There was an ISM event that Daniel ran in London. And um, there was also, uh, he was at an MMA conference. I don't know if anybody was at that one. It was uh, the, the, the sessions I've been at. It's been very nice to actually meet people. Uh, there's also events happened recently in Switzerland. I wasn't at that one myself. Um, I've, uh, I think I've been places like Norwich, very exciting, uh, but also the Netherlands, and uh, went to university in the Netherlands and was talking to them about using Dorico. Um, also, if anybody uh, is interested in becoming a Steinberg certified trainer for Dorico, then uh, do get in touch. Um, it doesn't matter which country. Obviously, other languages are helpful. I don't speak many. Um, this Saturday, if uh, anybody hasn't signed up and you're going to be in London at Yamaha Music London on Wardour Street, which is just off Oxford Street, um, I'll be there all afternoon. It is recommended that you sign up for the sessions we're doing, um, but I'll be there all afternoon. So if you want to uh, pop in and say hello or come and ask questions, then uh, that'll be good as well. And it will be uh, hopefully a nice sunny day out in London. Today, uh, the session is brought to you by the letter V and the numbers 1 and 1.1. It will be a kind of a, I'm, I'm hoping to show you a preview of some of the things that will be in the next version of Dorico. Um, but first, uh, questions that I've had either online, via email, uh, and on my travels to places. Um, the first one was about some layout options. Uh, so uh, here we have one part from uh, a West Side Story. And um, the, the question or the, the idea behind this one was uh, somebody who was creating a, um, a marching band piece and they needed to print both A4, uh, but they also needed to print uh, sometimes if the band is actually marching and they're using the, uh, a lyre or a little music stand attached to the instrument. They need to print kind of two different layouts of the same, uh, the same music. So what I have here with this part is in setup mode, I've used the button down here on the bottom right to add a new instrumental part. And in that instrumental part, which I've renamed uh, Read 1 Octavo, uh, I've just added exactly the same player. So Read 1 layout and Read 1 Octavo layout are exactly the same uh, at this point. Um, now, when, I, when I'm using these, of course, I can just um, write the music normally. If I show you both layouts at the same time, so I can add a new tab up here, or there's a little plus button over here. Um, I will add a new tab for my read one octavo part. Uh, and I can also, just so you can see them, I'll split these two, um, split the screen vertically so you can see them both. So on one side, I've got the read one octavo part, and on this side, I've got read one. Um, on this octavo part, uh, if I, we have a look in the layout options, here you can see the full score and both of the parts. You can see that read one is using A4 paper uh, in portrait, and the read one octavo is using octavo paper, hence my naming and the orientation is set to landscape. Um, so if you want to, uh, you know, you, you can play around. I've also actually changed the staff size here because the music will obviously be closer to the player when it's uh, on their, their lyre. So um, the, the staff size can be smaller to get more on the page so they don't have to do page turns. So now if I just zoom out slightly here, you can see this one is a different size of paper to uh, this one here, but if I, select any of these notes and to change anything, for example, pitches, you can see them updating on both sides. So it's one, and in the full score, it's just one instrument, but we've got two layout options, two different ways of displaying it. So then when you go to print this, you'll be able to choose which ones you want to print at that one time, but keeping everything all in the same project. So if you do make a change or update something, you know, there's a, a mistake on a note or, um, uh, you know, a dynamic or something like that, then you'll be able to, to change them in both layouts at the same time without having to think about it too much. Um, there was also uh, a similar question. Somebody said, instead of moving around the score a lot when they've got two flows, if you've got two movements, so down here I just have one flow at the moment, but maybe you have added another flow, um, you could optionally create another full score layout that only contains the flow you're working on. 
So if I add a flow down here, this is uh, so I've got flow two, I could add a new full score and I could say that the full score doesn't contain the first uh, the first flow. So this flow here, um, when I view it, I'll just so we can tell the difference, I'll call this full score flow two. I view full score flow two uh, and I'll turn off my split for a second as well. Um, then you can choose what do you want to appear in it. So uh, you can choose which instrument you want to appear in it. You can choose which flow you want to appear in it. So you'll be able to navigate around much more easily into whichever one you're using. So full score flow two uh, now contains this one. And if I say I don't contain that one, contain the new piece, I can now start my uh, new piece uh, and carry on from there. And it might be easier to move around just while you're creating that movement without having to, you know, constantly going back to movement one by accident. So you, you might find that useful. Uh, there was another question came up about um, text borders because at the moment, um, although you can create text items, you can't necessarily put a border on that box. So, uh, but what you can do is for any uh, text item, so let's say we can take uh, one of these. If it's a frame, you can add um, uh, you can add a text border to it. So if I select this frame here in the properties section at the bottom, there's a show border option. So now I get a black line around all of that. So whatever size I make this frame the the uh, text box will then um so the the border will then be that size so although you it, it may be useful and at some point in the future to have that as a, a text box uh, option so when you use the shift x uh, text box option at the moment you can at least do that in frames if you need to uh, just by adding a border to that frame um there are also some questions on uh, ties and handling of ties uh, because in Dorico, by default, um, you uh, a note is it, it, it looks like it's two notes. In some um, music programs, this would be two notes. Um, but in Dorico, this is just one note. It just depends where it's positioned in the bar. So as this note would move around in the bar, it will display accordingly depending on where it is in the bar or if it's been split by a, a bar line or anything else. So um, I mean, and there's a lot of good reasons for this. And also, I mean, if nothing else, like at the beginning, I had some articulations on here. Dorico knows the difference and knows where to put the articulations. If I was to select just this note, for example, and then add a dynamic, then Dorico will know where to put the dynamic and you know which of those two uh, note heads to, to put the dynamic on. So there's a lot of good reasons for that. But there was kind of some people were saying, but, oh, but I have to keep kind of cutting them. Well, you, you can cut them, of course. You can use you and you can cut a tie. But sometimes just um, making the note longer or shorter that you already have is useful. Uh, I'm not going to go into this too much today because we, there, there's some other changes to this coming. But um, for example, you'll be able to, you can at the moment use things like Alt Shift. If I use Alt Shift left arrow, as you can see from the shortcuts at the bottom, then I can make a note shorter. So you don't necessarily have to cut the tie, delete the extra note, or you know change the note value or anything else. You can just use Alt Shift and left and right arrow and make notes longer or shorter. Now, as I said, I'm not going to go too much into that because there there will be a couple of changes on that. But at the moment, in the the version you're using, in some cases that may also be useful. And let's come back to um, ties and uh, and options on that uh, at another time. Um, now. I'm now going to show, and you might might have noticed, not not too many differences at the moment, but I'm, I'm now going to show some of the things that will be uh, in in one version 1.1. 1 .1. Um, the version I'm using at the moment, it's kind of a preview, if you like. I'm not going to show all of the options. I'm just going to go give you a taste of some of the things that you can do and, and some of the new features. I'm not necessarily going to cover them all in great detail, and we can do that in other Dorico sessions, other uh, Discover sessions at a later date. But to give you kind of an overview of what some of the changes and things are that are coming up. So from this point on, unfortunately, you won't be able to copy the things I'm doing in, in your current version because the version you download today, um, you probably don't have um, all or any of these features. Um, I'm just quickly checking on the, um, the comments as well. Somebody asked um, about becoming a Dorico trainer. Um, I suggest, at least for that at the moment, get in touch with me. Um, my email address is uh, j.baron, uh, which is two R's, so j.baron at steinberg.de. Um, I'll also, just a, a small caveat, there's a slight delay on emails and some communication at the moment because our Hamburg head office is moving, physically moving their entire office. 
um, and it will cause a, a couple of communication issues. So if you don't hear from me for a couple of days, if you're emailing me right now, then my apologies, you will get a reply, your email will get to me, um, but there'll be a slight delay in communication. But if you're interested in becoming a Dorico trainer, um, then let me know a bit more about you and where you are and that kind of thing. Just get in touch by email, uh, at least for now. Um, so, um, somebody's noticed the tremolo icon has gone. Yes, we'll we'll get to that. So, um, so this so now a preview of some of the the new options. Now I'm going to start in a slightly odd place um, in in the preferences dialog. Um, when you're adding uh, key commands, so shortcuts, key commands, whatever uh, we call them, key commands. There's a new MIDI learn option. If you ever wondered, and you've got a MIDI controller and it's got those drum pads on the top, what do I do with those drum pads? Because I don't really ever use them for anything. Then uh, this uh, might be a useful option. For any of the shortcuts that you have in Dorico, you can assign a MIDI note, a controller. You you know, if you've got a a, a keyboard um, with extra controllers and things on, or any of the normal standard MIDI notes, you can assign them as a shortcut in Dorico. So I have uh, behind me um, a very nice Yamaha MX88. Um, it's a nice keyboard. They're not fantastically expensive. They also do a 49 and a 61 key version. Um, I've got the 88 key one behind me. And when I'm entering notes in Dorico, I often find I'm not really using the full extent of the 88 keys. So I've assigned some of those keys to be shortcuts. So for example, in uh, the, the note input options, um, you can see if I go to set duration and some of these notes. So for example, uh, quarter note or crotchet, depending on where you are, um, I press the MIDI learn button. I press the note on the keyboard and it's filled this in automatically that says note on 33. So I've chosen which key on my uh, keyboard uh, is going to be that, uh, that particular note. Uh, and that will then uh, be my shortcut as well as the, the, the normal shortcuts. So I'm going to start a new piece and you'll be able to see how some of these things work. Uh, and some of the shortcuts and things that I, uh, I've already added. So uh, I'll add a new, uh, a new piano player. And here we go in, uh, in right mode. So, so you can see what's going on. Um, I've attached a little camera. And you can see the left-hand side of my keyboard. So look, if I, if I wave, you see you can see it really is live. That's, uh, that's me. So, so here we go with, um, if, I, if you watch the keypad, um, so the, the options up here, for the note durations, I can change these note durations by pressing notes on the MIDI keyboard. So I've got, what I've done is I've kind of based mine on um, C at the bottom um, being effectively shortcut one. So when I want a crotchet, which for, in Durico is shortcut six normally on your keyboard, I've assigned that to A, because in my head, uh, at least when I'm thinking in C anyway, um, then that, that makes some sense. So, so I've got crotchets and quavers. If I go down a note and I, I can keep going and the notes get shorter and shorter as I get all the way to the bottom and all the way back up again. I've also assigned a couple of other shortcuts so that I can do things like turn the carrot on and off. So the, the orange uh, cursor line here. Um, I've also, because I make mistakes when I'm doing things, I've also assigned an undo key. So the B flat right at the bottom that you can see down, uh, down here, that's an undo command. So if I press some notes and play, some, uh, play something in here, and then if I press B flat, then I can undo those as well. So now I can uh, use the, the, the shortcuts with my left hand on the, the MIDI keyboard and the right hand to play some, play some notes in. So I'll give this a go. I should probably put a key signature and a time signature in first, really, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah, let's do that. So let's say, uh, what are we going to enter? Okay, this will be in B flat, and it'll be in 2-4, and we'll go. There you go. So now you can see all the notes that I've entered. Um, what I also missed out was uh, I, I forgot there's a rest uh, supposed to be in the middle of here. So of course I could use insert mode for that. I have actually assigned a rest key as well. So um, I've assigned an E flat at the bottom so that if I need to move on when I'm doing MIDI input, I can. So I have a note selected. I can press uh, the bottom A 
and for me that's uh, that's given me uh, the carrot again i can carry on playing and if i want to enter rest i just press e flat so you can carry on entering uh, uh, all, all of the notes that way and i've you know I've, I've assigned a few other things that are useful for me like i said undo i find uh, quite valuable so if if you have a, a large MIDI keyboard there, you don't necessarily have to remember the keyboard shortcuts and the note values and things in Dorico if you don't want to. You can assign your own. So like I said, if you've got those uh, drum um, pads on your MIDI keyboard, why not use those as note, note values? Uh, and, and you can have one, one for each of the note values you commonly use. You can assign a rhythm dot. Um, you could assign slurs to them, you know, you, you, whatever the shortcut is that, that you would uh, find most useful, you can do that and it, it will probably speed up your MIDI input options. Um, I've also uh, decided to uh, assign a couple of others. So, of course, uh, chord symbols is one of the things that's coming in uh, in the next version 1.1. So if I press a C sharp, then I get my little popover for chord symbols. And the reason I've done that from the MIDI keyboard is that as well as being able to type into this uh, popover, whatever the chord or anything else is, I can play it from a MIDI keyboard. So if I just play a chord, then Dorico will put the chord in. If I don't miss out the bass note this time, then it will also put in the chord symbol. Now, at the moment, some of the final display things, are you know, don't worry about the size of the flats. Some of those are, are being looked at at the moment. The, the point here is that with this chord, I played it with a B flat on the bass, and with the next one, I didn't. So uh, Dorico knows the difference, uh, and has said, based on the preferences that are currently set, then that's you know, what I think the, the chord should be. You need preferences and options for these. So let's have a look in the engraving mode. Sorry, engraving options. Uh, there's a new chord symbols section. So in here, you'll be able to choose, for example, the presets. So you could choose a particular style, and it will update the dialog to, to say, you know, the, the, to, to match that existing style. Um, so if you want um, your um, the kind of the, the sharp eleven, sharp nine, and the you know, the bass notes, if you want them displayed in a particular way, you can pick from one of the many presets in here. Uh, there's also Nashville, so if you want to do Nashville numbers, so instead of saying this is uh, in C uh, and that's chord one, you can say it's just you know it's just chord one and then chord five, and it will do it that way. Um, there's some Ted Ross options, uh, you know, you, there's there's a number of options in here. Now for any of those, you can then go and tweak them slightly. So you can say that the chord root is standard or uh, solfege or Nashville the where the vertical position of the accidental is and the appearance of the accidentals is do you use b and b flat or do you use h and b flat i don't know who had money on um 19 minutes past four but there you go there's the ice cream van uh so sorry b flat b and b flat and we've got h and b flat and we've got h and b depending on your country and uh, and how you define them then uh, you might want to change those uh, is C do or ut? Is D uh, re or do you want it with an accent, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Uh, do you want six flat or do you want flat six? Um, the major and minor triads, uh, how you want those to be displayed? And uh, do you want min or mi or a minus sign? Uh, you know, th th those options are in here. Uh, some of these need to still be uh, still be finished, of course. Um, yeah, I mean, at the moment, I'm not even halfway down the dialogue, so I'll I'll keep scrolling so you can uh, have a quick look at some of the options and uh, you know uh, what you'll be able to do. Do you want to say C5? Do you want to say C and it three? Um, you know, you, you get the idea. There's there's a lot of options that you'll be able to choose as uh, your defaults for this project or for um, for any projects from here on. Um, I should also point out, as well as the save as default button button, there'll be a reset to factory option down here. Um, so if you change a load of things and you want to go back to what it should have been, then you can uh, reset all of these uh, engraving options back to their factory options. So I keep going down this dialog. Here's some more options uh, and harmonic spelling options. And of course, positioning, uh, how far off uh, the, the staves they'll be. Um, there's also, uh, just kind of finish off some of these, there's also for chord symbols, what happens with um, additions and emissions and inversions and suspended chords and uh, do you want to say add two or add nine? Uh, th those options are in there as well. So this is a new note input options dialog. And there's also a MIDI input. So if you are putting them in from a MIDI keyboard, there's some options here as to what will happen as you're entering things. Do you want to move on to the next beat or the next bar automatically? You can set up these options as well. So 
um, I can't show you all of the options right now, but you get the idea that, uh, that these are all the, all the things that we're finishing off at the moment, and they will be in the next version in 1.1. In so I suppose hopefully people are start to get the idea of why chord symbols are a fairly large and, uh, and complex thing. It's not just uh, sticking a bit of text on a page. And yes, of course, they will transpose. Um, I suppose that was a given. Now, uh, just because I want to put some pedal lines in down here, I'm going to put some more notes in. That'll do for now. So if I uh, select a bar, any of these bars, um, and I use Shift P, I can now type ped, and I'll put in a pedal line. Um, you'll also notice uh, in 1.1, for a, a number of things now, you'll get these attachment lines, so you can see where it's actually attached to. Um, and if you, um, and when you select it, you get these drag handles as well, so that you can use with a mouse. You can also do these, so if I am in input mode, and I do, uh, uh, Shift P, type ped. I can then use a space bar to extend it. Um, so I can say, I oh, know actually I'd like to go to just that one, please, this time. Um, you can also, at any point, if you select the note, uh, or either in input mode or afterwards, uh, if I press Shift P and the little um, hat, so it's my Shift 6 key uh, in, on an English keyboard, uh, press Enter, then I'll get um, a retake symbol here. Um, you can, when these are selected, you can use Alt and you can a right arrow, and that will move the whole pedal marking along. I can use Alt and Shift, and that will extend the the beginning, sorry, at the end of uh, where that pedal marking is going. You see, it's jumping between all the the beats, uh, so you can get that exactly where you want it to be. Um, if you're using a mouse, it will also do that. So you can uh, drag these around the beginning of this one around, and it's going to change. Or you can drag the end of this around, and it will jump between the various beats. Things like hairpins will now also act like that. So when you're putting them in with a mouse, if you want to drag them in right mode, then uh, they will uh, jump sensibly to the, the options you want them to be in. Um, oh, yes, so I, uh, I, I've just gone and deleted the... Uh, um, retake and um, there are also some other options in here so if you want uh, let's say you want to put in a pedal marking but you actually want them to just say half then you can you can put in just a, a half symbol well, I just did one over two and there's also options for quarter and three quarters it depends how depressed you are um, and then you uh, you can put in those lines uh, and you can edit all of these as well so now if I go to engrave mode um, when I click on my pedal marking, as well as the, the options I had before and the, uh, the attachment lines, um, I can move individual bits of these things around. So this one here will let me change the, uh, the size of this hook at the end. Um, there's an option here that I can use to, to adjust how much the pedal is depressed at that point. Um, there's one at the end here if I need to just fine tune around that note exactly where that's going to be. You'll notice here in the, in the middle, for the retake, I also have some options, so I can set how much the pedal is being depressed at this point up to the retake and after the retake. And I can also move the center of this retake around. So if I need to just fine tune adjust around that note, then uh, then I also have those as well. So in in right mode, you not you get all of the, the the moving options you'd expect, and it will jump to the right things, uh, the the right places, and obviously you know, generally avoid other other items to cause co collisions. But if you need to make fine uh, tweaks and options in here, then uh, then you can do those. Um, it's not just um, uh, pedals as well. Uh, if I go back to um, right modes, you can see some of them. And sorry, but obscured there with my shortcuts but you get options here for how you want these to appear so do you want to say ped dot or just ped or p or do you want a symbol um you know you can choose um your your options again you choose your defaults uh, as normal and then you can overwrite them down here in the the properties panel um the line end hook do you want it to be there or not what happens with continuations do you want the pedal to start before the grace notes or end before grace notes um do you you know the, all of these kind of options uh, are there do you want it uh, dotted because it's a continuation up to a star an asterisk at the end all of the uh, all of these options are, are, are all in there so you'll be able to have a play with those um, we think it's it, it's it must be one of the 
the most comprehensive options uh, in software for for doing pedal markings now. So um, and obviously we'll uh, appreciate feedback on those as well. But um, yes, th there's all sorts of options and things in there. And don't forget to look at the engraving options when we get that far. So there's pedal line options in here as to um, you know what's the size of things and the gaps before things and what the defaults are before grace notes as well as the overrides, of course. Um, the vertical positioning of things, um, the heights of the the retakes um, and pedal lines and hook lengths and all those kind of things. You'll you'll be able to adjust all of those um, so that you can set your own defaults. Um, there's also uh, I know it's come up again today on Facebook actually about uh, filtering and voices and things like that. So now in the edit menu, um, you'll find there's an option here for filters you'll be able to uh, either select or deselect. So you could select a passage and then say, only deselect the chord symbols, for example, or only deselect the uh, dynamics uh, and then kind of copy everything else or change everything else. Um, but you'll also, so if I make a selection here, um, then the options won't be gray. Uh, and you can filter, you know, notes and chords. You can filter voices, so all the upstem voices or the downstem voices. I only have one voice, so it's only giving me one option here. The notes in chords. Do you want to filter off the top or single notes, the second notes, you know, the, the bottom notes of the chords? So you can copy them somewhere else. So, for example, here, if I quickly create, uh, I'm sure many people have done this before. Um, when you're doing an arrangement of something, I create a violin and I take these notes here and I'm just going to filter. Now, I don't have a shortcut assigned to it, but I could assign the shortcut. I'll take off all the top notes of that one and when I copy them, I can copy them to a violin. I'm sure lots of people have done those before. Um, there's also uh, options either in the menu or when you right click when you do voices. Um, you can swap voice contents, you can change the voice. So you can make a new downstem voice. Effectively, in, uh, in Sibelius, you'd be switching them into voice two, for example, so that you can do something else above it. Um, or if you've accidentally written the notes in already in the wrong voice, and you need to change those, then you can swap the voice order, or you know, you, you've got options here as to, uh, to fix those. So you can put things in the right voice so the stems are all pointing in the right direction. Um, so yes, uh, and certainly have have a look at those. Uh, you'll be able to have a look at those filtering options, and uh, and I'm sure that will make uh, lots of people very happy. I know for um, for a lot of orchestral things, um, the ability to just obviously copying things around is is massively speeds things up. But copying the right things around because you filter them first yeah, will will help even more. Um, there will also be some options regarding uh, things like um, dynamics. So in here, if I put in uh, a quick dynamic option let's do that one um when i copy dynamics you'll see when these are selected now it's linked to the two dynamics because it knows they're the same and they're all in the same place and i copied them so when i've selected one of them it's totally showing me in blue all of the other dynamics that are attached um, and are linked um, so now when i click on this mf for example i can just drag it with a mouse and as I drag one, it will update the other ones that are also linked to it. So if you have four horns and they've all got the same dynamics, then uh, and you just need to move them slightly, then that change will now affect all the horns so that you don't have to make the change four times. Uh, also, if I now decide that actually I needed that to change, so if I say Shift D and put in a forte here instead, then it will not only update this dynamic, but also the other ones because they're also linked. There's also a grouping option. So if you've got some dynamics and you want to group them together so that horizontally they're all uh, in alignment, then you'll also be able to do that. So with any of these options, you can select or deselect uh, multiple options. And in dynamics, you can group them, which is the, the horizontal plane, or you can link them, which is uh, the vertical plane where you, you, uh, you'll have multiple instruments all doing the same dynamic. Uh, and as I said, moving those around and you know um, dragging them or otherwise, that will update all of them at the same time. But you can, you'll have noticed in that dialog with you can ungroup things and you can unlink things. So in certain cases where you only want to change just that one, you'll be able to uh, to link or unlink those if you don't want the change to happen to all of the uh, all of those instruments. Uh, moving on quickly, there's also for people who use a, a mouse a lot in the uh, general preferences, there will be some new options. So, well, th this one, some people didn't like the fact that when you double click in setup or engrave mode, it switches you to write mode. I really like that because normally I double click because I'm about to enter notes there. Some people, um, they, they don't want that option. So you can now just uh, untick that box. It won't do it for you. 
Um, there's also an allow multiple items to be created with the mouse. So if you use the mouse a lot to create items, if you're, for example, with dynamics, if you're not using our popovers and you're using the panel on the right hand side here, then uh, you, what you'll probably want to do is uh, choose that option so you can create multiple items with the mouse and possibly load the cursor with the item. So for example, if I turn both of these options on, uh, then when I'm creating dynamics over here, um, I can select dynamic and what I'll end up with ooh, is, uh, oh, in fact, I've turned both the options on. Oh, so I can create, anyway, I can create multiple dynamics wherever I click now. It's creating those dynamics without me having to do anything else. So I can enter, if you're using, I think it'll also be useful if you're using a Surface Pro and a stylus, um, because you can effectively load the stylus with the option that you want, and then just click in multiple places, uh, and it will put those, um, those dynamics in for you. Um, personally, I use shortcuts a lot, so I have that option turned off, uh, but yeah, it's, preferences are there to be, uh, to be your personal options. Um, when you're moving around in the score, um, Command or Control G will now let you go to a bar or a flow. So you can pick the flow. I only have one at the moment. But if I have multiple flows, I could go to a particular bar number in a particular flow if I wanted to, which is a quick way of jumping around. Uh, also, playback will now uh, follow the score. So if you've got, especially on large orchestral scores, uh, when, when the score's playing back, the playback line uh, is moving, but the score will update underneath, so you don't have to keep scrolling uh, to, to keep up with the playback. It, it will now take you there automatically. Um, one thing, for some reason, uh, I'm just reading my notes, and I didn't include in my notes, but I probably should, um, is if I wanted, for example, to put in a, a repeat ending line, so first and second time repeats, you notice down here, there's a now repeat structures. So this is where your tremolos were. So uh, who's the, somebody asked earlier, and they noticed, obviously, I was using a new version. Uh, Anders said, where does the tremolo icon go? It's on the right-hand side panel. Well, the, the icon has changed because it's now repeat structures, because obviously tremolos are repeating notes, uh, but now the repeat ending lines are here as well. So we, the, the icon's changed. So I've selected a bar here. Uh, let's say I'll use this bar. Um, and the repeat endings, if I just click on this icon here, then I'll get the first time uh, repeat and a second time repeat. And because it's generally useful to do so, it's also put in the uh, repeat uh, bar lines as well. Um, now, there, there are some other options and, uh, and things on here as well. So um, if you select these now at the top, for example, in the properties section, this by default is number of endings two, but if I say actually I've got three endings, then I can have multiple repeats. If I say actually number of times played is actually more, then I can say, well, this is the first time repeat, this is the two to six, and this is number seven onwards. So you've got some options here as to what you do with, uh, with endings. If actually you only had a, um, I'm gonna add a few more bars at the end of here. If you want this to be extended and go a, a bit further for your second time repeat, then you can select this bar, and I'll shift select, or you could control select, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter which. Um, and then you can say, actually, I'll uh, add in uh, the, this button here. So I'm adding a repeat. So now the second time bar is over multiple bars before the third time uh, section starts. And again, it's put in a, a repeat bar line because that would be useful to do so. So, um, so repeat ending lines and uh, chord symbols, I know will, will make quite a lot of people happy. Um, there's a few things also in engrave mode. Um, I'm just quick check checking comments again. There's the, the, the bar numbers in the middle of a large score, you can set where the bar numbers will appear if you want them to appear above particular instruments. But if you're in galley view at the moment, um, then uh, I know somebody said that when they're in, in galley view, they would quite like the, them to appear at the top. And at the moment, they don't. It's only at the top of this staff. Um, I know what some people have used if, if they're working a lot in that in a particular view or on a particular set of instruments, they found it actually useful to create a different layout which contains just those instruments because they then don't have to move up and down quite so much, but um, it, it depends what you're working on. Uh, your mileage may vary. Um, so new options in engrave mode. Um, so at the moment, uh, when you um, to toggle frames on, um, there's, uh, well, you can still select items inside the frame. Um, 
that I just double clicked by accident on my uh, my trackpad. So if I toggle frames on, you'll normally find that when you select items that you can't, well, you can you can change things and actually we should be editing frames. So now the new version will stop you doing that, but it means that when you select a frame, um, you can also press tab and you see it's selected just up here. The, um, I'll show you here. Uh, it's selected this this top icon here and if i press the right arrow then it moves on to this one here so now i can more easily move around to the different bits of the frame that i want to edit so now if i press alt down for example i can just nudge this frame up and down and if i press alt uh, control or alt command then i can move in larger jumps and i can do that for any of these um for any of these handles just by moving around with them with the arrow and when i press tab again it toggles that off so i can now jump to another frame and edit that one um, so like I said, when you turn frames on, uh, tab will get you in and out of that, um, the, the selecting these handles, um, but you now can't select the items inside because you're, you're editing frames at the moment. Uh, and for anybody who's also noticed at the bottom down here, there's a note spacing option. So underneath the staff spacing, which you will already know about, there's a new option for note spacing. Um, and the note spacing option down here, um, you can see now it's put in the, um, just for Peter, what because he's just a no, this is in the new upcoming version, Peter. Sorry, um, all the stuff I've been showing recently has all been thing. It's a preview of what will be happening in the new version. Um, so here you can see all of the 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 beats um, for for all of the notes that I've already entered. Um, and if you want to, you can adjust these now. So if I want to choose one of these, uh, I can now individually adjust one of these. I'm using Alt and the right arrow. Uh, and this one will move uh, that you know, that entire beat um, left and right. You'll also notice on the right-hand side down here, it says well, this system is 87% full. Um, so there is a bit of space if you want it, um, and it will, as I move things around, it will update to tell me how full the, the system is, how much space there is. Uh, there's, a, there's also um, an option with all of these. If there's a note here, you can see there's a underneath it, there's another little option, which is another little circle, another little handle. So if I select this one here, although I can move this beat uh, to be wherever I want it to be, so I've, I've just done that double click thing, which I shouldn't have done. So if I move this maybe out of the way slightly, I can individually move a note backwards or forwards inside that beat. So I get control over the entire um, vertical structure and all of the, the people who are playing at that point. Maybe a better example is, is with this one here. I can move everybody to the right slightly, but if I need to move this individual chord, then I can move from this handle move to here, move this one left or right, so I can adjust individual ones. Now, this isn't a great example because Dorico actually got it right to start off with, but in some cases, you might just want to make a small uh, adjustment to some of these, um, and you will now have the control to do that. And with any of these selected, if I just press uh, backspace, undo, uh, then um, it will remove all of those and go back, so they're, they're all blue now, and I can tell that that's the, um, that's the default. Um, hi, Daniel. He also seems to be answering Peter online. Um, the, also, when you're editing master pages, uh, so if I double click on a master page here, um, you'll also notice at the top there's a copy page layout option. So in here, if, let's say, for example, I'd made a new layout or some new changes on the left-hand side, and I wanted it to apply to the right-hand side, I could just click this button here, and it will automatically uh, apply. Because the, probably the default is that the pages are going to match left and right, um, so whichever one the music appears on. Um, but if you make a change, it was a bit cumbersome to have to make the change twice, depending on um, the, what you needed left and right pages. So now you can copy either right to left or left to right. Um, there's also uh, a new option in the layout options to, uh, while we're, we're on these kind of subjects. Um, if you have a look, it'll be in your, it will be in staves and systems, not yet. In the casting off, there's an option for fixed number of bars per system and fixed number of systems per page. So for example, lead sheets, um, that, kind, that type of thing where you want to set and always have exactly the same number of bars per line, per system, uh, and the same number of systems per page, you can now set that uh, just in your layout options, and it applies per layout. So if you want to do a layout that has that and a layout that doesn't, then uh, you can do that. And if you want it to apply to all of your parts, then don't forget you can select all of the layouts here. There's a select all, or there's just a select the all the parts or all the full score layouts. And then the options that you choose here when you press apply will apply to all of the layouts you have selected. Um, 
there was also um in the last couple of days somebody commented that they they were uh, they had flow bloat um or they were flow bloating flow boating or overflow they were no no suitable term for this what they've done is um they, when they're composing they've created a new flow for lots of the elements that they're then using in the piece and they've realized that either they they now have an awful lot of flows and they might have used them they might not and they they don't know do they want to keep them and um a bit of kleptomania i can't actually get rid of anything so but it'd be nice to have it but not necessarily in the project so for that kind of thing and for many other cases there is now an export option for flows so if you've worked on um multiple movements and you actually want to make a new project which just contains one of those movements um, then you can export flows and in here, you can choose the flows you want to export. You can select all or select none. And you can also export layouts as separate files, if that would be useful. And it gives you an option of where to export it to, and if you want to put that, uh, it, uh, create a folder for the options you're exporting. And since you can export them also in import, you can import flows. Uh, and in here, if you choose, um, here's a, a little example I did earlier, you can choose then, am I going to create new players uh, for whatever exists in the flow, or am I going to try and merge them with existing players? And when I click OK, then it will merge the flows that I'd selected in, uh, into the existing piece. So now I had uh, flow one, and I now have another flow one, um, because it, it was also a flow one, uh, but it's existed afterwards. And of course, you can drag these around. So if you want to change the order of, uh, of the flows, once you've imported them, then, then you can do that. Um, I'm just quickly checking the comments. And Daniel's answering some of the comments in there as well. So that, that's thank you very, very much, Daniel. Um, also, uh, a couple of things in, in play mode. Um, now, in here in play mode, um, you'll notice that there will be some changes. And I, I can't show all of the options here at the moment. But there will be some changes here. And uh, I can select multiple items. I can adjust the lengths of multiple uh, multiple notes. Um, the You'll also be able to change uh, this couple of options up here for played durations and notated durations. Uh, maybe we'll show more of that in the next session. Um, but also will be of interest to some people, down here there's a MIDI instrument section. So we now have effectively MIDI out. So not just VST instruments like uh, Halion or GPO or uh, you know, VSL, anybody like that. If you have a MIDI synth sat somewhere in your desk, on your studio, then uh, you could use that as well. You can uh, add in here a a rack you choose what you want to use so you can see my uh, mx keyboard has multiple ports and i could use that um, it's also got a thousand motif sounds so i could I, I could quite happily use that if i wanted to instead of using a vst instrument um, it will also be useful to people who want to use a midi bus to send something out uh, probably to another computer that maybe all your samples are running on another computer somewhere the uh, the midi instrument options will help you there um, and you'll be able to, of course, set expression maps to all of these as well. So if you want to choose uh, the, the expression maps for all of the MIDI instruments, and then you'll be able to assign them from here is to, to tell them which of your instruments in the score is playing through which VST or MIDI instrument. So there, there's a, a quick whirlwind tour through a, a whole bunch of options. I haven't mentioned things like the chord track up here. If you want your chords that I entered earlier to play back, then the, you can make them play back. Just choose an output. Um, I haven't mentioned some of the um, the other editing things that you'll be able to do uh, in right mode. Um, as I did say at the beginning, um, all of the things, uh, there was a few things at the very beginning, but most of this session, the last half hour, has all been a kind of a preview as some of the things that be in version 1.1. Um, it will be a free update, um, as the other ones have been as well. Somebody's bound to ask me when it's coming. Um, Daniel said it will be, uh, looks like, before the end of June. So uh, it will, uh, 25th of May at the moment. So, um, so sometime in the next month, um, you will be able to play with these options uh, as long as they're finished. Um, and which brings neatly on to, I suppose, the end of June, the next Discover Dorico session will be on Thursday, the 29th of June. Um, and we'll be, again, email in uh, dis discoverdorico at steinberg.de. Um, any questions you've got about things, I'll be checking the Facebook page in the comments on there as to um, things that people want to see or that they're confused about and things we should cover in these sessions. 
Um, you can get in touch, like I said, by, by email. Also, um, of course, on the forum with anything and questions that people have and how to do things on there. Uh, if you are coming to, um, if you are coming on Saturday to the Yamaha Music London, I'll see you there. Um, if you're in another country and you'd like an event, then um, get in touch with me and I'll, you know, I'll see what we can do. In uh, some countries, we already have trainers and people running events for things. Um, often the Steinberg Facebook page has an events uh, list on there. Um, and we're adding more options to it all the time. So maybe I will get to meet you somewhere or you will get to meet another uh, Dorico representative. But uh, thank you all very much for listening. Um, I'll, I'll check all the comments in a second so that we can uh, see if there's anything else needs answering. Get in touch and uh, we'll see you next month. Thank you.